this is Matilda and she is in the dark because she has got black on and she's on a black background and uh, it's just kind of navy blue and she's got a lot of hair so I'm gonna move her up okay now she also has her old black bear she has got some puffy hair one thing I like about Matilda is that she has a face I've done before this is the same face as Almeria same type sculpt. It's not the exact sculpt, but very similar in the mouth. So I gave her the open mouth, and you can even see her bottom teeth, which is kind of cute. Her mouth's a little bit more open than Matil I mean, um, Amaria's was. So little Tilly here has uh, a really interesting story. Her apron actually came off of like a, it was something you put on a liquid soap bottle. So when I did it, I had to take it apart because it was actually sewn together. I had to take it apart and sew it back on her. And then she had maybe a flower or something was glued over here and I couldn't get the glue mark off. So I sewed her spider there so you can see her spider. Now she has a bear that I had about six or so of. And I dyed them when I dyed the rest of my clothes. And they took that dye like crazy. They were tan, but they're like a terry cloth fabric. And they went nuts with that dye. So I really like them. I mean, they're supposed to represent, you know, the burn look, the charred look. So definitely got that. Uh, the little dress she has on has some really sweet little puffy sleeves right here, little Victorian sleeves. And her arms, because they're kind of chunky, they were, uh, they fit really tight on her, which is sad because she has the cutest arms. I think she's wearing her original dress. I have two dolls that have the shorter bodies one I sold back in 2016 and then her and the, and I may have mixed their two dresses up but they were this exact same size she is uh so I had to make sure these dolls got their dresses back on because I don't have many dresses this a doll that, that would fit so she is about thir maybe 13 she got a lot of hair you got to keep in mind 13 inches let me get that thing a little over 13 inches tall. She is a little, she's pretty much the same size as the doll I did. Um, that uh, her proportions a little bit different. I should pull her up. And uh, I'll just cut all this out. Okay. So she is got the same size head and hands and things like that of the bigger dolls. It's just they put her in a much smaller body, which is really cute. And she works so well with her other sisters because of her different size. Now she has, she has some dark, dark blue eyes that once you start working with these eyes and you put the, um, dull them down that I, it's kind of weird. I dull them down and then I brighten them back up with some clear. It really, uh, it flattens out that color on her and she gets these kind of dead eyes. I love it. She has dimples, a little bit of rosy cheeks. I love this piece of fabric. That I use a little bit of story behind that. I bought some vintage doll clothes and this was in there. When I say vintage, 19, the kids who owned these dolls grew up in the 50s and early 60s. So that was the time period of all these doll clothes. Anyway, so this came out of that batch and it's just a tiny little piece. And I saved every scrap imaginable. And it was a pink color and I dyed it until I got it that nice gray color. So I just love her hair. It's just poofing out everywhere. And it's kind of short. Let me turn around. So she's kind of got a little bit shorter hair, but it is thick. And it is fluffing out everywhere. Boy, put her black on black. It's just not working. And she's got a lot of texture to her hair, too. Look at that. Now, I do use different strands of hair. So it gives it a whole bunch of crazy stuff going on. I, I had a lot of fun painting her, and I love her outfit so much. Her dress was really plain, and just putting that little apron on it, to me, just made her. Now, she is one of the dolls who has the weird feet that are really big, uh, because she was probably an eight, you know, early 80s doll, and they had this typical mold that they were all using, even in the late 70s, where they had these big, chunky feet. And so she has those feet, and so she has to wear a special kind of shoe as well, because her feet are a little bit bigger than a typical doll shoe. They have to have the soft sole shoes. And I gave her some really cute little socks. Of course, it would help if you could see them. And uh, I found that, and I, I think I lost track of what bloomers were hers. So I had this pair. I don't know if these are her original bloomers or not. But I do like the little eyelet on there. I don't think this is the only pair maybe I had. You don't see a lot with eyelet. Usually it's lace. Her head turns. Now you have to physically turn it. It doesn't turn by itself. She's not that creepy. But I had taken her head off in order to give her wires for her arms. 
the uh, zip tie around her neck, I did a little bit looser so that you could move her head from side to side so she can kind of stand sideways and show off her little bow. And that makes her extra cool. So anyway, back to my little bears. This will be the only doll that will have a bear this year. I'm down to my last two and I pretty much try to get one every year uh, that I've made my dolls. So, or maybe one or two. I know I've used more than one, but I'm down to my last two. So this one will have one. I probably won't use it again until next year. So she's the only got the burn up bear. She's fun. I mean, her little hair is so sweet. Uh, that face, look at that little expression, just crazy. Just a crazy little girl. I love to give him all these great expressions. That's the difference, I think, between, you know, how some people do these dolls. I like the people who are really make them super unique and give them really good expressions. One of the fun things to do with these little dolls, anytime they're holding a prop, is to just take a little rubber band. I have a little clear rubber bands that I use. And you just add it to their hands. Now, of course, over time, the rubber bands are going to give way. But you can also stitch them on in such a way so it looks like they're always holding them. And sometimes that does work better than they hold them in their arms because they really don't have, like, most of them don't have the appropriate hands or they can't bend their arms and wrist enough to hold something because obviously they can't bend their wrist. But their bodies, you know, just aren't made for holding stuff. So I have just added, like, a little elastic. And you can see it right there around her wrist to both their both of their little arms so it looks more like she's holding him so that makes for just a really cute way to pose her and I kind of have her head turned and you know just give you some ideas on things that you can do with her I am going to try to start incorporating this more into my dolls I really hate having to go through and change out heads all the time one reason the fabrics that most of these dolls are made of it's not a really good quality fabric and it will tear easily because these doll heads are typically glued. So I'm kind of limited to who I can actually get a head off without um, d damaging the fabric. So when I do, I did put, like I said, I added wires to her. They're really little thin wires, but they're very flexible. And that's what I liked about them so that you could pose her easily. Anyway, she is so dark because she's dark on dark on dark. Let me get her out kind of in the light a little better. So give you a better look. But her eyes, because they're so dark, they're just little ref light reflectors. They're just so beady. And then, you know, just, she looks really sweet with her, her siblings. So I, uh, yeah, I, uh, I really like her. I just love her that she's smaller and she does come with a prop. Anyway, thanks for watching.